the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Tuesday Night Live, Bible Study. Good to have you with us. Pastor Bill Emmons here, Covenant Faith Center, CFC Ministries International. And uh, I've got to turn off this computer over here and uh, shut it down. All right, praise God. Good to have you with us. Uh, <laughs> I think I gave my introduction many, many times over the last year and three months or so, but uh, we're sure glad to be on the air, able to minister to you. And uh, we've uh, increased to 14 social media platforms. So if you can't find us on one, you, you can probably find us on another one. But um, we have the uh, our um, YouTube channel and the YouTube channel uh, under Pastor William Emmons. You should find this face, the picture up there. Uh, if you want to go back and, and uh, look at any of the past programs. If we're in a series, like right now we're in a series, if you, uh, it's your first time viewing and you want to see parts one and two of, of this series, uh, you can go on our YouTube channel and pick that up and, and watch that there. I uh, just want to share real quick before we get into the Word tonight. Um, we are at uh, almost 16,000 views so far this week. And um, last week we hit another milestone, we, we were right at 20,000 views. Uh, but every time we hit another high milestone like that, uh, the bottom is always higher than it was before. And we are now, like I said, we're almost at 16,000. So that means we are reaching uh, at least 16,000 homes or individuals. Uh, if you go by the studies that are done, that 16,000 could actually be three times that because they say there's three, an average of three people in every home. So we're, we're somewhere in that, in that um, 16,000 plus plus, all right? Uh, what that simply means is we are having the privilege to reach out into people's homes and uh, minister the word of God. And if, if you're from a traditional religious background, you might find some of the things we have to share with you 
uh, revealing, uh, astounding. Uh, you might even have a chance to get offended, but don't let yourself. The Bible says we're not to take offense. So if I'm ministering on something or I share something with you that you've been taught differently on, don't get upset. Just keep listening. And the reason for that is eventually uh, you'll probably get it. You'll probably finally get the revelation. The Bible says meditate. God said meditate my word day and night, Joshua 1.8, so that you might observe and do. The word observe really means to gain insight or revelation. And uh, the Christian walk is not only based on the word of God and, of course, the work of Jesus, but growth in the Christian walk, growth in the church worldwide, is based on revelation of that word. It's Jesus told Peter when he said, who do men say that I am? They said, some say you're uh, this, you know, I'm just paraphrasing, this prophet or that prophet. And uh, he said, who do you say that I am? And he's, his response was, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. He says, Peter, you're right on. That's what the Greek word, uh, when we translate it, rock means. And, and it just simply means he's right on. He's solid as a rock. Uh, but the Greek word means like a pebble. Uh, then he said, upon this, I'm going to build my church. And they use a Greek word that's translated a little bit different. And it means like a huge rock like Gibraltar. And it was the revelation. He said, Peter, you're blessed because uh, you didn't get this from flesh and blood. You didn't get this from people. Uh, you, you didn't get it from going to church, going to synagogue, whatever. He said, but my father, which is in heaven, has revealed it to you by his spirit. And that's the revelation that God is building the church on. And uh, as we know throughout the church history, uh, there have been teachings that have come to the forefront that had not been uh, we're not being teached, teached, <laughs> taught, <laughs> but, um, I told you, you might hear something new, <laughs> but, uh, all of a sudden it, it comes to the forefront and, uh, it's because it's time for that revelation to be revealed. And we're in a day and time where not only is prophecy being uh, manifested and revealed, but, uh, the revelations for the end times are coming forth. So, you know, just because I say something a little differently than your pastor might say it, don't get shook up. Just go back to the scriptures I give you and meditate on those. And I honestly believe that the Holy Spirit will give you the revelation, let you see the truth that I may be sharing with you. So with that, let me give you the title because this is a Bible study. You're probably taking notes. I believe you are. Uh, the title is kind of interesting. It's five words. Believe, Receive, trust, act, results. When you begin to believe, the next step is believe you receive. Then you have to trust what the word says. You have to trust what God has declared. You have to then begin to act or be a doer of the word. And when you combine these things, the results is that you'll receive. Receive your healing, receive your miracle receive your answer to prayer, whatever it might be that you're believing for. Uh, this is part three of the seed planting, root growing, harvest reaping series that we're on right now. Kind of strange titles, but uh, they kind of give you a kind of brief look at what we're going to be sharing. Mark chapter four, verses 26 through 29. By the way, welcome our Facebook family. Welcome our Instagram family and uh, all the other uh, social media watchers of all the other social media platforms we're on, welcome. Uh, uh, we only have a monitor on one channel or one page, which is um, my Facebook page, William E. Emmons. And uh, so I can only see people that are on uh, this particular. Hey, Anita, good to have you with us tonight. It's good to have you with us tonight. <laughs> Amen. And uh, we praise God for all that he's doing in your life. And uh, along with that, the lives of people that are being ministered to by this ministry. So Mark chapter four, verse 26 through 29, King James translation. And Jesus said, so is the kingdom of God. Now, now he's making a statement here. So is the kingdom of God. As if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep, 
and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up, and he knoweth not how. Now, have you ever thought about that? We, we grew a tomato garden out here uh, this summer, and actually it outproduced what other people, uh, you know, I guess in the area have experienced. It outproduced what they projected. Uh, they said it might not produce any at all because of the small heat wave we had in the middle of the summer. Uh, uh, but we would speak to it. Pastor Mary shared Sunday that I would go to the window every morning, look out on our tomato plants and speak to them and command them to produce, to grow. And, uh, and they did. And when it came down to it, uh, I believe the Holy Spirit gave me the, the wisdom that it was time to harvest. We had already been harvesting for a few weeks. Uh, as they would start getting ripe, we'd pick them and we'd share them with people. And we gave some away. And on the last day, we harvested 35 tomatoes, which may not sound like a lot, but it wasn't a big garden. And, um, you know, the next night, that night it froze and the, and the plants died. So the timing was right. Everything was, was right on it. But here's the thing, and I've done this before, as, have we, as we've planted plants and different things over the years, it, I've often thought about how does a seed, uh, you know, sprout? How does it draw nutrients from the soil that will turn it into a plant and, and eventually fruit or vegetable, whatever it may be that you're growing? or flowers, in my wife's case. <laughs> How does it do that? Well, we don't know exactly. If, you, if you're a botanist, I guess that would be the biology, the botany, I don't know, the, this area of science where they would study these things. Uh, and I, I remember taking biology in, in um, high school. I don't think I took it again in college. But anyway, uh, you know, you, you learn some of these things. You learn about photosynthesis and how energy is converted to nutrients and that's converted to, you know, parts of the plant that, you know, so you, you learn a little bit about that, but still it's, it's an amazing miracle mm -hmm. to watch it take place right in front of your eyes. And uh, that's what he's showing. He's illustrating. I had somebody tell me one time, well, you got to quit telling your stories, your illustrations, it, uh, just, just, you know, preach the word. Well, Jesus, is telling a story to illustrate a truth he's trying to get across. He's, he's illustrating it with this story. All right, so <clears throat> it, um, it would spring forth, it grew up. He didn't know how. Verse 28, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. In other words, it's the earth acting upon the seed. The seed can't do anything by itself. What's in the ground, the heat, the moisture, the nutrients have to act on that seed and actually have to begin breaking the seed down before it sprouts a root. And, and then it'll sprout a, a, a little green, that's what he says here. Uh, it'll, uh, let's see, bring forth fruit of, its, of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after that the full corn in the ear. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle, because the harvest time is come. When, when it's time to harvest, just like when uh, our, our fruit was ready to be harvested and the Holy Spirit said, do it today, you know, and the next day or the next morning it was freezing. Um, when it's harvest time and people that grow grapes, for example, boy, they test those grapes. They test for sugar content and uh, whatever else they test for. And they know exactly when is the right time to harvest those grapes. And other crops, uh, the farmers have learned these things and a uh, little bit of bi biology, you know, in, in the process of their being farmers. But they know when it's time to grow or, or uh, well, plant. They know when it's time to harvest corn crops. They know when it's time to harvest the corn. And that's, that's the illustration he's using here. But he's illustrating the kingdom of God. And so when you take that and you begin to look at what he's saying, and uh, he's talking about the way the kingdom of God works is there has to be a seed planted, mm -hmm. all right? The ground has to receive it. Now, now the ground doesn't reject the seed. It, it's just dirt, right? But ultimately, that seed has to go in the ground. It can't lay on top of the ground. The birds will come along and eat it. We got birds here. <laughs> we, we've got... Uh, Oh man, we got always have uh, sparrows and they're so fun to watch. 
Uh, it's like they play all day. It seems that way. Uh, we have purple martins that come. We have geese. I, yesterday I saw about 30 geese flying. Uh, they flew over the road and off the, off the fields on the side there. Huge, huge uh, Canadian geese. And uh, we got hawks that are constantly looking for food. Uh, and I think last week it was, we saw, was it blue jays or blue birds, you think, Mary? Blue jays. Blue jays, yeah. We saw blue jays with that blue chest. Beautiful. Well, they'll eat the seed if, if you leave it on the ground. So you got to put it in the ground. The ground receives it, all right? So he says, uh, then the earth bringeth forth fruit of itself. In other words, it acts on the seed. When a, a spiritual seed is planted in your heart, mm-hmm. all right, it's your spirit man, the ground, that will act on that word that is planted in it. Mm-hmm. You remember the scripture where it says, a good man of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good things. Another translation says, a good man out of the good deposit, in other words, what he's put in, will bring forth into manifestation. One translation says, fling forth into manifestation good things. And of course, we know in, in the realm we're dealing with, the way that happens is with our words. As we speak and declare, that's why it's so important, especially in the times we're living in right now when we're, we've been under attack uh, with a virus. We've been under attack uh, right now financially. We've been, we've been under threat of war, rumors of war. We're, we're living the last days prior to the rapture of the church. Mm-hmm. But the principles still work. Mm-hmm. When you plant the word of God in your heart, eventually your spirit man will go to work because the word is spiritual uh, food for the spirit man. And eventually that that your spirit will begin to bring forth as you open your mouth and declare. Mm-hmm. You see, it's producing inside of you the the strength the hope the the victory that's all prepared for you and as you begin to declare the end from the beginning like it's the bible says copy god's example and he spoke things the end result from the beginning well we're supposed to do the same thing we're supposed to be speaking the end result not what we have not what is but things we're supposed to speak of things that be not as though they were and so that is, we draw from what's in our spirit, man. We draw from the seeds we plant in our hearts. But if you don't plant any spiritual seeds in your heart, in your spirit, man, there's nothing to draw from. And then you got people that are born again and they're living defeated lives. They're, they're living uh, lives that are failing because they somebody has not taught them or they don't have the initiative to spend the time meditating the word of God feeding on the word, like, like Jesus said, man will not live by bread alone, but by what? Every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Living out of our spirit, man, is how we're supposed to live, can only happen when we feed spiritual food into the spirit, man. That's like the planting of the seed. All right, so, and then the, the illustration here is, fits perfectly. Bringing forth of herself, first the blade, then the ear, and then if that the full corn in the ear, having the ear, the 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 um, let's see first the blade then the ear. I have I have been, seen cornfields where they were small little look like ears, but you go up and grab a hold of it and there's nothing inside that husk yet. The the ear has to grow to fill that space and become whatever size they are. You know, <laughs> the different kinds of corn grow differently, but. First the blade, then the ear. Then it says, then the full corn in the ear. All right. So before we can harvest, we have to allow the seed we plant time to grow. Now, how do I, how do I explain that to you? All right. You're believing God for healing. You've, you've been confessing the word. You've been declaring it over your body. Every time the doctor or somebody says something negative, every time you have a negative symptom, you are declaring what the word says instead of what your body is saying, instead of what the doctor is saying, instead of what the reports, the the tests are saying, you're saying what the word says. Now you may have to, uh, you know, say, well, the doctor said, but see, I don't leave with what the doctor says. Uh, The doctor gives the best he can give based upon what he sees in tests, but it doesn't have to stop there. 
we continue the process by declaring the end result. By his stripes I was healed, therefore I am healed. And you may be in the middle of a terrible physical challenge. Maybe it's a financial challenge and you're struggling financially. And, you know, you could be going around like a lot of people do. I don't know how I'm going to make ends meet. I don't know how I'm going to get my bills paid. Uh, You know, the bill collectors are calling me and so forth. Well, we went through that a number of years ago. And uh, we finally dug in and we began to meditate on God's uh, uh, covenant promises of provision that God would provide. My God shall supply all my need. Father, I thank you that you are. See, I'm speaking the end result. You are supplying all of our need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You said, whatever I give for the gospel's sake, it came right out of Jesus' mouth. Whatever we give for the gospel's sake, that it will be given back to us in this lifetime a hundred times as much as we gave. Uh, You know, good measure pressed down, shed together a hundred times. That's, that's blessing. But you may be in the middle of it and not be able to see that other than seeing what the word says. But as you renew your mind through meditating the word of God, what happens is you reach a point where you begin to see it, not with these eyes, but with your spiritual eyes. Mm -hmm. You begin to see the end result. And and of course, you've been declaring it by faith. But all of a sudden, see that that hope that uh, faith is a substance of what? Things hoped for. Hope is a confident and favorable favorable expectation of good things to come. I hope to be healed. If I'm really, if I really have hope, I can see myself healed, even though my body says I'm not. I can see myself healed, even though the doctor says I'm not. I can see it inside. I know it's done. And then what will happen is in the full corn, that faith will grow and grow and grow until it's ready for harvest. And the next time you say, by his traps, I am healed. Boom, that harvest comes forth. Or the finances, my God supplies all my need according to his riches and glory. And all of a sudden a check shows up. Uh, something financially happens to, to take care of your situation. But it's not, a, it's not a quick process. It's not a get rich quick scheme. Mm-hmm. You know, people think the prosperity, some people think the prosperity message is exactly that, a get rich quick scheme and that all we care about is money, and that's not true. But the principles are the same. Whether you're dealing with finances, whether you're dealing with healing in your body, uh, whether you're dealing with family situations or job or career situations, the, the principles are the same. You find what God says, you get his covenant promises. Mm-hmm. He said, my word will not return, return void, but it shall accomplish mm-hmm. that which I have purposed. God's word, if you take it and apply it, given time for it to take root and grow, will produce. And like I said, it, it's probably not most of the time going to happen overnight. And I'm not saying it can't. There are times where that things will happen overnight. Uh, sometimes there'll be times where it'll happen within minutes. But generally speaking, especially for more difficult situations, It takes time. You got to plant the seed. You got to water the seed uh, with the word of God. Uh, Feed your spirit, man. Keep your mind renewed. Keep moving forward in faith. Keep declaring the end result. Again, quit talking what is. Start talking what God has promised. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Amen. All right. Now, I quoted Joshua 1 8 to you. I have it here in my notes. Uh, But let me read it anyway. Uh, This book of the law, which is the word of God, by the way, shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, which that's your seed planting, that you may observe, that's your getting revelation, uh, that where the seed is taking root, and do or act on the word of God, which is your harvest time. When you act on the word of God, uh, that's like the farmer harvesting his crop, all right? According to all that's written therein, then you shall, you see, and I love this, I, I read this, I quote it a lot. Because when you do those three things, he says, then, then, after you've done those things, you shall make your way prosperous. Who's going to do it? You will. It's going to be the result of the time and effort you put into the word of God. The seed planting, the watering of the seed, and, and renewing your mind 
and declaring the end result, letting, letting that faith build, and eventually it will come forth through your words and bring the results you'll be harvesting. So he says, then you will make your way prosperous. Then you shall deal wisely. One translation says, you shall deal wisely in the affairs of life. I want to deal wisely in the affairs of life. I don't want to make stupid decisions, dumb deals. Uh, you know, when years ago I learned about, you know, how you buy a car. And uh, I, I was, one of my sons, uh, he needed a car. And uh, we went down to the dealer and we found a beautiful car, low mileage, everything like a brand new car. And he got so excited and he, boy, he just really wanted that car. And he said, all right, let me, let me tell you something. We have to negotiate. You don't, you don't ever pay what they're asking. I don't care if they say no haggle process, pr prices. I ain't buying a car unless I can, I can do it my way. I'm not going to do it their way. And so I pray ahead of time. You know, Father, what should I pay? How much should I spend for a car? So I go in there with a number already. And so I told my son, I said, don't get upset. We're going to make an offer. They're going to think that we're crazy. And they're going to say they can't take it. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to walk away. But be prepared to walk away. But don't give up. Don't quit. Because we'll get a call. And so we got in there. And, you know, it takes like four hours to with most car dealers to get something finalized, it seems like. And it's a waiting period. They're trying to wait you out, get you tired, so that you'll finally give in. So we went in there, we made our offer, and they laughed at us. And he said, you got to be kidding me. This is the manager. You got to be kidding me. That car's worth, you know, whatever. I said, well, it's only worth what somebody's willing to pay. This is what I'm willing to pay. And he's, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. And come back with a, a higher number. I said, that's my number. And I, I tell them usually, I said, well, I've already prayed about it. And that's what God told me to pay for it. So now you got, you got to obey God or not. <laughs> I put it back on them. But um, my son's sitting there and he's, he's all, oh man, I'm going to lose this car, you know. So we got in the car and drove, uh, our car, and drove away. And I said, now don't get upset and don't get shook up. I, I, I believe with all my heart, tomorrow morning we're going to get a call. And sure enough, first thing in the morning, phone rings, the manager's on the phone. He tells me, so I was talking to the owner and, and the owner said, we could accept your offer. If you want to come on down here, we can wrap things up. Well, we got it for the price, which was quite a bit lower than what they were asking. Uh, and and I, I say all that to illustrate that sometimes you've got to, well, all the time, I should say, when you're in a faith project, you can't allow yourself to be moved by what others say. You can't allow yourself to be moved by what it looks like, what it sounds like, or what it feels like. You have to be moved by faith according to the word of God. And if you're having trouble with your emotions or having trouble with your thoughts, you need to take control of those emotions and thoughts by opening your mouth and declaring what God said, because God's a covenant keeping God. He will not break his covenant promises. The problem is we give up on him too many times. All right, so we found out last week just a, a quick review here. Found out last week that a lot of the reasons why Christians are not receiving their harvest, you know, when they believe in God for something, is because of a lack of knowledge. They don't really know what the word says. They're praying in ignorance. You know, when you're a baby Christian, you can get a lot of prayers answered even in your ignorance. But at some point, you become responsible for, you know, eat, just like as a, as a child. At some point, that child has to eat on its own. It can't just be fed all the time. Well, the same thing is true with the Word of God. We've got to, on purpose, as an act of our will, begin to feed on the Word of God, meditate the Word, do what the Bible says, all right? And when we do that, then we begin to get revelation knowledge. But if you don't know that, if you're in a church that doesn't teach these things and don't teach you how to walk by faith, how to believe God for a healing, a miracle, finances, uh, relationship healing, whatever it might be. And, and every Sunday you go to church and it's pretty much the same thing. And they're telling you, you got to repent. You got to repent of your sins. Come to the altar and, and leave some tear stains on the altar and repent, repent, get saved. You know, I got saved when I was a kid. I remember growing up in church where they wanted us to get saved every week. And they wanted to fill the altar altars. You know, you all come down here and, and spend time getting, getting saved, getting, getting your sins forgiven. 
Well, I, I read the scripture. It says, if I've sinned, I'll confess my sin. God is faithful. God is just to forgive me of my sin and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. There is now, therefore, no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. God's not holding things against us. When we confess our sins, not because God didn't know you're surprising him, it's because we have to come to a point of recognizing our sin. All right, that's another issue. Um, people don't receive because Ephesians 4, by the way, that's Hosea 4, uh, my, where God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Uh, in Ephesians 4, 17 and 18, I read this last week, that sometimes people's minds, it says in the um, uh, in those verses, their minds are darkened and be clouded. Why? Well, a lot of times because they don't know what the word says, and other times because they're listening to the wrong voices. They're listening to the voices in their head, they're listening to the voices of their flesh, or even sometimes other people who haven't been taught properly, and they're telling you, oh no, this is God's will. God's trying to teach you something through this. Well, God can teach me something, you know, no matter what thing I'm going through, but God's not the author of it. We need to understand God's not our problem. God's on our side. He's not against us. He's not putting us through the mill trying to find out if we can take it. All right. Um, and then, of course, one of the reasons people don't receive it is because their minds are not renewed. They, they don't know either what the word says or they haven't meditated on uh, enough to get their minds renewed. Ephesians 4.23 says, be constantly renewed, constantly renewed. See, it's got to be an ongoing process. It can't be one time. You know, like you say, well, I had a steak. I, I don't need another steak. I've had it. I know what it tastes like. And, and you know, no, if, if you want more steak, if you enjoy that and you know the protein's good for you, whatever, uh, you're going to go back and eat more steak. That'd be silly to say, well, I've eaten that before. I don't need to taste that anymore. You're going to run out of things to, to eat if you keep that attitude. <laughs> All right. So be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. That's vital. All right. So why do so many Christians um, not receive their harvest? Well, I've already said lack of knowledge, mind darken or be clouded. In other words, uh, because you don't know what the word says or you got your, your focus is on the symptoms instead of uh, the answers uh, and their mind's not renewed to the word. But here's another one, not trusting in the power of the word. We actually talked about this last week. Isaiah 55 verses 10 and 11, for as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void. It shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper the thing whereunto I sent it. <clears throat> God has sent you his word. We call it a Bible. <laughs> this is my Bible. If you have a Bible, you ought to say that periodically. This is my Bible. This is God's word to me. I, I devour this word daily as my spiritual food. I meditate it and renew my mind daily. I walk according to the word of God. I'm a doer of the word and I get Bible results. So you ought to be saying things like that. All right. So um, God is saying that his word, now that's, that's a written version of things God has said to us. And forget all this nonsense and excuses and arguments about, well, you know, it's written by so many different people and it's, it contradicts itself. And, uh, you know, it's, it's been translated so many times, you can't even find out what the accurate translation is. Well, that's a lie. That's the devil trying to keep you from getting in the word. That's what we call the Bible, the word of God. All right. So we get in the word. And we find out that God makes promises and he makes He made a covenant. He swore by himself that he would keep his covenant promises. And that if we will get in there and we will begin to meditate those things and act on those things and begin to declare them that at some point in time, we're going to see it happen just like God said when his word goes forth. See, the, the word of God goes forth out of our mouths when we speak it. Well, it's still the word of God. And when we speak it, 
So God said, put me in remembrance of my word. And it's not because God forgets. I'm sorry, that's not a problem with God. When God says, put me in remembrance of my word, what he's saying is, speak my word back to me, because when you do that, it won't return to me void. It's going to accomplish what I sent it to do. So he sent his word on healing to accomplish healing in our lives, which was God's will for us. It, we, he, he, when you confess the word over your finances, it's going to produce provision and blessing and prosperity. And you begin to declare that to God. And that is coming back to the Father, not void of power. The word is filled with the power of God, the anointing of God. In fact, the Bible says that the word is anointed and that anointing destroys the yoke. That thing that has held you down, held you back and brought you into failure, that, that bondage that Satan has put you under mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, whatever it might be. It's the word, the anointing on the word itself that will break that off your life. But just because you heard it one time doesn't mean it's broken. You got it. That's where all this process that I've been talking about. We we hear the word. We believe the word. We receive it, and we trust in it, and then we act on it, and then we see results. There's a process. All right. Let me move on. I don't want to spend too much time in one place. Not that it's not good to camp out in the word sometimes, but we need to move on. All right. The second thing, uh, or not the second thing, but in tonight's list of why Christians aren't getting results. Not trusting in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We actually talked on this a little bit last week. The Holy Spirit is the conduit which God funnels his wisdom through to us. Isaiah uh, chapter 11 verses 1 and 2. Uh, it says, uh, let's see, Isaiah 11, 1 and 2. I've got two verses here. And John three thirty four. The one whom God has sent to represent him, will speak the words of God, which is the wisdom of God. For God has poured out upon him the fullness of the Holy Spirit without limitation. So what I said last week was the reason why Jesus had the fullness of the Spirit was because he spoke the word of God. The more you speak, and I don't mean just going around quoting scripture. I'm talking about taking God's promise and declaring it, the end result it promises, out of your mouth. All right? As you continue to do that about every situation you have to deal with, you know, one of the favorite things that Pastor Mary and myself do is when we have something to deal with, the first thing we ask each other is, well, what's the word say about that? The, the word is our final answer. Remember that... Uh, who wants to be a millionaire? Final answer. <laughs> the word is the final answer for us. And, and that's what it has to become for you. Don't allow what other people are saying to stop you from believing what God has promised. All right. So God has poured out his spirit upon him uh, because he spoke the word of God. Jesus was a man. He's born a human being. He, just, he stripped himself of deity, Philippians chapter 2, and humbled himself to be born as a human being. That's what some of these translations actually, they all agree, and they say, born a man, born a human. <clears throat> he was just like you and I. He had the same opportunities for weakness and failure that you and I have. Well, the Bible says you got to take the Bible for what it says. It says he was tempted in all points like we are, yet without guilt. He never failed. Why? He relied on the word of God. And I could, I could kind of picture what's going on in his mind when he was being tempted by the devil. The devil, the devil challenged him with the word, but twisted. And I can hear in his mind, what does the word say? And then he began to declare what the word says. Man shall not live by bread alone. And shall not worship any other God. And he just bringing forth the word. That's what we have to begin to do. All right. John 14, 26, Amplified Translation, but the Comforter, the Counselor, the Helper, the Intercessor, the Advocate, the Strengthener, the Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things, and he will cause you to recall, remind you of, 
bring to your remembrance everything that I, Jesus, the living word, it's everything the word says. He said, everything that I say, the Holy Spirit is going to bring the word to your remembrance. But you know what? You got to get in the word to find out what it says. How can he bring something to your remembrance you've never read? So a lot of Christians out there don't read the, don't read the word, don't carry their Bibles anymore. Don't open them up when they get home. They listen to a lot of preachers, but don't spend the time themselves in the word of God. You're never going to get very far in faith by just listening to a bunch of preachers if you don't put time in the word yourself, meditating the word of God, declaring it, acting on it, being a doer of the word, like James says. Amen. All right. Now, the next thing, a uh, reason why too many Christians do not get the results, they don't reap their harvest because they don't trust in uh, praying in and by the Holy Spirit. We talked about this last week. And I'm not going to go over everything. Just read some verses quickly. As is written, I have not seen, ears not heard, neither is in it into the heart of man, things which God has prepared for them that love him. Verse 10, this is 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God does. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak. You see how he says, first we, we, we hear, we, uh, let's see, we hear the words, we get God's wisdom by the Holy Spirit. He teaches us, and it says teaching, uh, let me go back and read verse 13, which things also we speak. So we're speaking the word, not in words of man's wisdom, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual or spiritual words. Now, the only spiritual words I know about have to do with praying in tongues. Paul says praying in tongues is praying in the Spirit. Now, if you come from a religious background that you don't believe in these things, well, hold on, uh, don't quit on me now. Uh, it's take these scriptures and read them for yourself. You cannot find one scripture in the New Testament that says the gifts have passed away. Now, there'll come a time when they won't be needed anymore. But right now, we still need them. But there'll they'll come a time. But that won't be until after the rapture of the church. That won't be until down the road. While we're living in this life, in this natural body, we need the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit, all nine of them. So, <clears throat> the ministry of the Holy Spirit Trusting and praying in the Spirit, verse uh, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. Well, we read there in the first, uh, uh, first Corinthians chapter 2, 9 through 13, it talked about the hidden wisdom of God, the mysteries of God. And he says here, he's confirming it. We speak mysteries. Now, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 13. Wherefore, let him that speaks in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my mind, my understanding is unfruitful. Mm -hmm. So we've got to understand that we can't just spend an hour praying in tongues unless we're going to pray. Uh, now, you, when you intercede for somebody or for intercede for a situation, you might do that. But when it comes to getting wisdom, getting an answer, you need to pray for interpretation of tongues. Say, so can I interpret my own tongues? Oh yeah. Ask the Holy Spirit, reveal it to you. I'll pray in the Spirit over a situation for a while. I'll say, now Holy Spirit, reveal to me out of that what I need to know. Some of it may be intercession. Some of it may be a revelation that he's going to give you. But he says, and he's talking here specifically about the church setting. And he says, you know, in the church setting, it's better to speak in a prophetic word or a word uttered by the Holy Spirit in, in the natural language so people can understand. He said, but, uh, you know, if I'm going to pray in tongues, I pray if there's no interpretation, I pray to God, and, you know, just me and God. 
It's personal. But when it comes to ministering to the congregation, he says it's got to be interpreted. But he doesn't limit us or tell us to quit praying in tongues. He doesn't tell us that we should never do it or that we should never do it in church. There's times we're in worship and, and I'm, I'm praising, I'm singing in the spirit. I'm not ministering to anybody. I'm just involved with worship. And that's vertical ministry. The horizontal ministry is when it needs to be either in your known language or with interpretation of tongues. Just thought I'd straighten that out for you. <laughs> All right. But we, we speak out when we're praying in the spirit. <clears throat> we speak out the hidden wisdom of God. We're speaking out hidden mysteries. And that's why it's important that we begin to pray for interpretation of tongues. Now, verse um, 15, what is it then? I will pray with my spirit and I will pray with my understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. So there's singing in tongues and singing with my natural language. There's praying in tongues and praying with my natural language. Now, when it's worship, like I said, it doesn't necessarily need to be interpreted. But when it's ministry to others, it does. All right. I think we got that one straightened out. All right. And the final one I'm going to touch on tonight, not trusting in your salvation. I've only got about, oh, 10 minutes left, roughly. Not trusting in your salvation. And let me, let me just, in parentheses, I, I did this on my notes to remind me. You're not trusting in your place with God. Well, what is my place with God? Well, you're a child of God. You're seated at the right hand of the throne of God, the right hand of God in Jesus. So that's a pretty good place to be. So we're talking about salvation. We're talking about forgiveness of sin. Talking about righteousness or right standing with God. We're talking about access to God. That only comes through Jesus Christ. So a lot of times Christians, oh, they believe in God and they believe that they need to repent and so forth, but they don't trust their salvation. They don't trust that their sins are forgiven. They don't trust that they have right standing with God. And a lot of preachers remind you, well, you're, you're a sinner. You know, you, you got sin, you got to repent. Well, uh, if I've repented, there's no more sin, okay? You don't trust that you have access to God, direct access through the name of Jesus. And these things only come and came through Jesus Christ. They don't come through Buddha. They don't come through Muhammad. They don't come through Confucius. They didn't come through Joseph Smith. They don't come from some angel, supposedly, or supposed angel. They come through the work of Jesus. Now, an angel may be sent to minister a message to you, but you don't pray to angels. You don't talk to angels. You can't pray to Mary. You can't pray uh, to people that have died, uh, you know, family members, relatives. You can't pray and ask them for help. It's, they don't even know what's going on down here. They're, they're, they're not involved with that. They're involved now with heavenly things. It's, you know, it's, it's like telling my mom, you know, do this for me. You know, go talk to Jesus for me. It doesn't work that way. God said, come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain help and mercy in time of need. He didn't say go pray to somebody that died. Amen. All right. Hebrews 10, uh, chapter 10, uh, Amplified Translation, just three verses. Whereas this one, Christ, after he had offered a single sacrifice for our sins that shall avail for all time, sat down at the right hand of God, then to wait until his enemies should be made a stool beneath his feet. For by a single offering, he has forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are consecrated and made holy. Who are those? Those that get born again. You need to begin to meditate that if you don't have confidence in your place in the presence of God, that God will hear your prayers and answer your prayers and, and receive you without condemnation. All right. You need to meditate on this. Acts chapter four, verse 12 from the Amplified Translation. And there is salvation in and through no one else. I just mentioned to you a few different names. There's only salvation through Jesus Christ. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which and in which we must be saved. What is that name? Jesus. 
Jesus. Where you can only get saved by calling upon Jesus. And the Bible says, they that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You got to learn that you can call upon the Lord. That, that word saved salvation isn't just getting born again. It includes that. At the, that's the first thing. But being saved also includes deliverance. Mm -hmm. It includes protection. It includes answered prayer. Needs being met. Whatever the, the devil is attacking you with the curse, whatever area it's in, the word saved is covered. It, it covers it. Salvation covers your sickness. Salvation covers your financial needs. Salvation covers, uh, you know, whatever. I mean, you're in your own mind. You're probably thinking already of something that you've struggled with maybe for years. Salvation already covers that. You've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and given right standing with God. All right. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Amplified translation. All are justified and made upright and in right standing with God freely and gratuitously by his grace, his unmerited favor and mercy through the redemption, which is provided in Christ Jesus. Never do you find any other name used as, as a reference to how you get saved. It's only through Jesus. The anointed one, by the way, the word Christ means the anointed one and his anointing. And actually, it was a step further in manifestation. When you get born again, the anointed one and his anointing is manifesting in your life. When you get healed, the anointed one and his anointing is manifesting in your life. When you get an answer to prayer, the anointed one and his anointing is manifesting in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. <clears throat> now, verse uh, uh, Philippians Chapter 1, verse 11, Amplified Translation. May you abound in and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, of right standing with God and right doing, which come through Jesus Christ. Again, clearly directing us where it comes from. The Anointed One, to the honor and praise of God, that his glory may be both manifested and recognized in you. Hallelujah. When you get results, that glorifies God. Amen. 1 Corinthians 1.30. This one's from the Passion Translation. For it is not from man that we draw out or draw our life, but from God, as we are being joined to Jesus. In other words, we draw life as we are joined to Jesus. The more you draw near to Jesus, the more life you draw upon from him. The Bible says that, that um, uh, let's see, as we draw near to God, he draws near to us. Well, you draw near to Jesus, he draws near to you. You draw near to the Holy Spirit. Same thing, he draws near to you, amen? And now he is our God. I'm sorry, back up. Now he is our God-given wisdom, our virtue, which is life, our holiness, and our redemption. Holiness has to do with our condition. Redemption has to do with the restoration of the condition man was in before the fall. No sin, no curse. Hallelujah. All right, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14. We're going to close with these verses here. <clears throat> King James translation. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession, our, our confession. I know that's become a dirty word. So do you know that there are churches? I mean, uh, we're now in, if I can say it this way, we're in the faith Mecca. What do I mean by that? We're in the place where faith has been born in the modern uh, faith teaching uh, back in the 50s. And, uh, you know, you go back to Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin, and you come forward to Kenneth Copeland and, and Jerry Savelle and Fred Price and, and now, you know, current pastors, Keith Moore, um, and the list goes on. Uh, 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 Bill Winston, the list goes on. Us, <laughs> <clears throat> we are born of faith by the word of God, by his faith. Amen. All right. Um, Seeing then that we have great high priests passing the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, 
hold fast to our confession. I, what I started to say, there are churches even right here in Tulsa that began as faith churches from the faith teaching that have turned their backs on the faith teaching that no longer associate with those who do teach faith. And, and this has happened not just here in Tulsa. I mean, uh, it's happened across the country. There's a lot of churches that used to be faith teaching churches, and all of a sudden they don't teach faith anymore. They teach uh, other things, which, you know, other things are not bad. I mean, grace and mercy is not bad. You know, we walk uh, by faith. Uh, uh, we're saved by faith through grace. And, uh, <laughs> there are other messages that we can preach, but you can never stop preaching on faith because everything we receive from God is received by faith. Mm -hmm. So why turn our backs and shut that down and say, well, I don't believe in that anymore. I don't follow those faith preachers anymore. Why? You need to be built up in faith, mm -hmm. probably more than almost any other area because faith gets the rest. Amen. All right. So we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like we are. He's talking about Jesus. He was tempted like us in every area we've been tempted in. Well, I, I find that hard to believe that Jesus could be tempted uh, to, to drink and get drunk, or tempted to have sex with women. And, 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 you know, you can go on and make a whole long list of things you don't believe he would ever do. Well, he didn't, but he could have. Otherwise, the Bible's a lie. He stripped himself of deity. Remember Philippians chapter two, he became human. Well, humans are subject to temptation. And if he's going to be our perfect representative, he has to have experienced the temptation without yielding. So he was the perfect sacrifice. And that's what he did. Amen. So he could have yielded. I mean, there's one point where he says, father, if there's any other way, let this cut pass from me. He knew what was coming. He's, he's asking the father, you know, is basically, is there another way? Can we accomplish this some other way? He knew how rough it was going to get, but he said, nevertheless, he said, what did he do? He submitted his will to will of the father. Nevertheless, not my will, but thy, thy will be done. Praise God. He did. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> and it finishes off that verse says yet without sin, let us, oh, I love this. Let us, therefore, because of that, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. What is God saying to us? He's saying that because of Jesus, we have access to the very throne room of God. We can come in by faith through the name of Jesus and stand before God in the spirit and proclaim our situation and get help from God for our situation. But too many times people won't do that because they feel guilty. They feel ashamed. They feel condemned. That's the devil talking to you. The, when, you when the Bible talks about wisdom, it says, ask for wisdom and I won't even find fault with you. You may have just sinned. And then you turn around and say, God, I need wisdom. He was not going to you know, use the fault as an excuse to not give you his wisdom. He said, if you ask, you'll receive. Now that sin is not going to help you, but it's not going to stop you from receiving from God. Amen. All right. I have completed this, at least this portion. I don't know if we're going to continue this or not. I never know from week to week if we'll continue on the same subject, but I think we've covered this pretty good uh, over three weeks. If you haven't heard the first two parts, uh, go to my YouTube channel, uh, Pastor William Emmons and uh, check it out there. We have a lot of series there. You can go back and check out the series and go through and study areas I'm not teaching on right now uh, and get all the things we've taught on it. Praise God. All right, we've got about three minutes left. So uh, we've got a new month. We're, we're now into uh, official holiday time. We, we're, uh, as of today, into November. We got Thanksgiving coming up uh, about three weeks from now. And then uh, about seven weeks or eight weeks from now, we've got Christmas coming up and then a week later, uh, New Year's. But uh, this is an exciting time of the year. And, and uh, you know, some of you need to believe God for provision for this time. Maybe you got children. Uh, you don't know how you're going to give them a good Christmas. You know, this is where God comes in. 
He cares about those kids. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't quit believing God. Just confess. God's going to provide the finances so I can bless my family. God's going to provide the ability for us to have a good Thanksgiving, a good Christmas. Use your faith and then enjoy the season. Enjoy this time. It's a blessed time. It's a, it's a, it, for me, it goes too fast. It's, it's here and all of a sudden it's over. So we keep it going all year long. And I won't tell you the things we do, but we, we enjoy this all year long. Praise God. If you want to support this ministry, we have a blessing to you and, and you feel that uh, God is impressing on you to sow seed financially into this ministry. Let me put up a screen over me so you can see, and I'll read to you real quick before we're done. At the top, you see it says giving, and you can text your giving if you're going to give by debit or credit card. And you can text your card information to 818-679-7067. And then if you look at the last line, it says debit card, debit or credit cards. You can text your email. So if you go up to the middle where it says PP, that stands for PayPal. That's how you find us on PayPal, by the way. Uh, that's our email. So if you want to give by T uh, texting or emailing your card information. There's our email right there for you. Uh, if you want to mail, check or money order, mail it to CFC, Post Office Box 141074, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma 74014. And then there's the PayPal, uh, how you find us on PayPal. The next line is Venmo. If you have a Venmo account, you can uh, type in the at symbol then William dash Emmons dash 10, just like you see it there. Capitalize the first letter of my first name, the first letter of my second name. Each of those area ways of giving uh, work. We've, we've been, you know, people have been given this ministry through each of those different ways. But let the Lord direct you. If you feel like God wants you to share and uh, partner with us on a monthly basis, then by all means, just be faithful and do what God tells you to do. If you feel like God's saying, well, uh, maybe maybe you don't feel impressed to partner yet, but you feel like God wants you to do something. Just be obedient. Do what God tells you to do. This ministry is 100% supported and able to do what we do because of people that are partnering and, and supporting us through their tithes and their offerings. So all you got to do is pray and ask the Lord what he wants you to do and then do it. Amen. Hey, we love you guys. We'll see you Sunday morning on our normal time, West Coast Pacific time. Uh, will be 10 o'clock, uh, Midwest time will be noon, East Coast time will be uh, 1 o'clock, and then like I always say, if you're somewhere in some other time zone, you'll have to figure it out. But you can always come back after the fact and uh, watch and listen to our messages, uh, either on my page, our church page, or on my uh, YouTube channel. So with that, have a blessed night, have a blessed week, and we'll see you Sunday morning.